Hi and welcome back to Datafile. This is the second tutorial of the uh, Julia Tutorial 2021 series. Uh, it's actually the first one, the first tutorial where we're gonna dive into into actually coding into Julia. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's uh, dive into the notebook straight away. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, this is tutorial one, first steps. Um, just a quick reminder, all of the code I'm gonna write and all of the this notebook and the other ones as well for the other tutor tutorials are gonna be available on GitHub, on my GitHub uh, repository, Jodo Tutorial 2021. Um, so you can find them here and uh, you can download everything. I prepared everything for you, you just have to to download it and um, and you should be good to go if you want to uh, to have the code straight away if it's faster for you if it's easier for you you can you can go ahead and do that it's all available free for uh, just on the internet um, okay so that's what we're gonna cover printing commenting declaring variables and base math um, so we're gonna start with printing what is printing so printing is whenever you have to um, display something. So you can display uh, text, you can display numbers, you can display the value of a variable, you can display tons of things. Um, so let's let's start with that. Um, so let's uh, say that I want to print something. Um, this is uh, a string, a string, and oops, sorry, and then control enter, and it prints a string. So that's great. Um, now if I print something else, uh, a second second line, print um, a second line, we have a problem, right? Uh, everything is, is stuck together. If I put dot 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 here, you can you can see that everything is is on on the same line. There is no space between those two strings. Um, so that's not quite what we, what we want. So if we want to have something which prints on a new line every time. Um, Julia has a command, a command for that. Um, it's sorry, it's print ln, and then you type your string. Uh, this and oops, this prints on a new line. There you go. So this prints on the on the new line, and if I just keep going. Uh, uh, Awesome. If I just keep going, it keeps going on new lines. Um, so if you come from Python, actually the print ln does the same as in Python the the print. Um, so it might be a bit confusing in the first place. It's actually confusing for me, but um, but yeah, hopefully you'll get used to that. Um, okay, so so that's it for print statements. We uh, there's actually a workaround that we, we could uh, touch touch upon here. Um, if you have a print statement and for some reason you don't want to use println, I don't really know why you wouldn't want that, but you can actually use the backslash n and it's going to do the same thing as a, as a println. So instead of having to write this uh, character at the end of uh, everything you're printing, it's easier to use the println, especially if you want to, uh, to print a number for instance, 42. Uh, yeah, you can't, you can't add a backslash n, for instance. Uh, yeah, doesn't doesn't work. So for strings, you have this workaround of using this this symbol, but it's better to use the println as it does this even for even for numbers, right? So let's check that. Oops, print println. Sorry, println forty two, and see that it prints on the new line, right? Okay, so that's it for printing. Uh, most of the time you're going to be using println. I can't really think of a time you would need to use print, but uh, good to know it exists as well. Um, now we have commenting as well. So commenting is useful if you want to print uh, whatever, something, and there you have it, something. And then I write something, uh, I write a comment with this sign, the sharp sign, right? Um, and I'm gonna write a print something. There you go. 
And you see that when I run this cell, the this part of the output is ignored. So you only have the the part before this uh, number number sign, however it's called, that's kind of sharp. Um, only what is before this sign is going to be um, seen by Julia. The rest is ignored by Julia. It's it's just here to give you. Um, um, to give you help or to give a precision on whatever the rest of your code does. So if you, um, so that's so that's useful. It's it's nice to have some comments in your code. It's uh, not a good idea. It's not rec uh, recommended to have um, tons of comments in your code though, because uh, if you have too much comment, it means that your code is not clear by itself. Uh, it's fine to have some amount of help, but you should. Um, your code should not be. Uh, your code should not need to have lines and lines of comment. Uh, it should be almost self-explanatory. Um, but in some cases, you might need to. If you want to write a bit more, you can use this thing, which is a multi. This is a multi-line comment, and there you have it. This is a multi-line command comment, sorry, and you can print something before. So you can print um, before, whatever. Um, and you can print something after. And I'm going to be the original and print after. And you see that everything in the middle is ignored. So this can take uh, several lines, but your your Julia will not care about that. It's it's just for human readers. You know the the weak things that don't compute very fast, uh, aka humans. Um, okay, now declaring variables. This is very important. Obviously, um, you have there there exist many languages where you would usually go with something like that var x dot or colon int equals forty two. Um, this is not the case in Julia. Um, it's way easier. I think in, in C probably you have this kind of syntax, maybe in Swift, I think maybe Java, JavaScript, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but in Julia, it's just so much easier. X equals 42 and it understands on its own. X equals 42, it's right here. Um, the reason there's a duck here, I might actually have <laughs> ignored the most obvious thing. But the reason there's a duck here, it's because this is called duck typing. So basically, if it looks like a duck, it swims like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck, I would say. This is a good life motto, you might want to remember it. Um, so yeah, uh, here, uh, Julia sees x equals 42, understands that 42 is, um, is a, um, an integer, which Julia would call um, int 64, as we're going to see very soon. So if we were to type type of, let's without the typo, please, type of x, then Julia tells us it's an n64, uh, meaning basically it's an integer. Uh, there is some consideration about the memory, the 64 bits or something, but you don't need to worry about that. Um, now, if I wanted to make it a string, I could add uh, quote, quotation marks around it and then you have this 42 and now it's a string. Um, now this can get tricky as well, so you might want to be careful because, I mean, 42 is the same as 42.0, right? Well, not in Julia, this is different. This is a float 64, as opposed to the to the in 64 that we had before. So just keep that in mind, uh, 42 and 42.0 are not the same thing. It might be useful if somehow you want to specify that this is an int uh, you can also write int of 42 and oops sorry this is a float i meant float and that doesn't work okay uh okay there you go <laughs> sorry i had a little moment here <laughs> um so anyway this is how you would uh, specify that this is a float 64 and hopefully there you go this is uh this is very much live i hadn't uh, thought about this ahead, so uh, this is art, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, okay, anyway, so if you wanted to, 
to specify that you want you want a float, you can just write 42.0 and Julia is gonna understand that this is a this is a float. Um, it can also get tricky though if you're trying to make operations and you expect a float, but you wrote 42, then Julia is gonna say nope, 42 is an integer or the other way around. So just be careful with that and uh, remember um, always be safe with the duck. Um, now. Beware number one. Yeah, that's what we what we talked about. Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. Um, but um, but yeah, so we have this uh, 42, and then we have this 42.0. And if I if I take the type of uh, it's going to be in 64, and for this one it's going to be float 64. So just beware of that. Um, okay. Um, now, what else we've got? Double quotation mark and single quotation mark. Yes, these are different. Why are they different? Why are they different? Why are they different? That works, right? And in Python, if you come from Python, you might think that... You might think that... Sorry, it's quite a mess. You might think that... This is the same, right? Uh, well, turns out it's not. The single quotation mark in Julia is used for uh, car. Char, char, let's say char. If it's car, just please ignore it, right? Just forget that I said car, whatever. Um, so if I put if I put this, you're gonna see it. So C or, or X, whatever, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, X is uh, is a car char, um, so this is only one in length. So you only have this uh, X. You can't put X C. This is going to return an error, right? Um, but there is a there is a cor correspondence with uh, with integers. So we can do this, 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 and 120. So there is. Um, a number, probably ASCII, ASCII number, I would guess. I'm not sure about that. You need to double check on that. Um, there is a number associated to it, to each character. So C would be this, and uh, Z would be, sorry, my bad. Z would be 122. Um, but it also works. It also works the other way around. So if you have, um, if you want to take the char of 120 then you get the X, right? So you see it goes, but it goes, it goes either way. Um, so that's something we want to keep in mind. Um, now, if I just call this uh, X char and I run that. Now, if I want to know the type of X char, it's a char, right? Um, or car. Please someone tell me in the comments how we're supposed to say that. I'm not native uh, English, I'm actually French. So, as would our English friends tell us, uh, I beg your pardon. Um, that was a poor impression. Now, type of X with, notice the double quotation mark here, and that's gonna be a string. So, see, single quotation mark, char, double quotation mark, string. Right, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can't have multiple characters inside a inside a char, so uh, do not make that mistake. Uh, yeah, string allows for multiple characters. Char doesn't. Right, we said that already. Um, okay, and now the final section: basic math. So let's jump into basic math. What can we do? We can do four plus twenty, and we're gonna call that my sum. And there you go, 24. So that works, it's easy clean. Um, we can have my product, my prod, which is six times two, that would be 12, everything all good. Um, my, now if you want my power, if you're a Python user, you would probably go for something like this, right? But, no, not in Swift. But Swift is smart enough to tell you to use this instead of that. So let's just listen to, oh sorry, I said Swift, I meant Julia, obviously. Um, so let's just listen to Miss Julia, always listen to the ladies. And there you go, you have it, uh, 
this number which I was not going to compute uh, straight away from my head. Um, now we have something else, we can do divisions, my div equals 9 over 6 and we have a beautiful 1.5 that works and it's formatted a bit better. Right, um, sorry. Um, now we can do something else, last thing probably, my modulus equals 31 and we're going to take this, 1. Now why is it 1? That's, uh, I don't know, maybe you, it doesn't jump to your, to your face straight away that actually, so I'm going to use the comments, remember that's the sharp sign, and this is actually 10 times Three, and if I'm feeling fancy, I can actually do something like this. Uh, in Julia, that works. So if you if you write something which is uh, in LaTeX format, so backslash times, if you have knowledge of LaTeX already, LaTeX is written uh, like this. Sorry. There you go. This is LaTeX. This is a math formatting um, language. It's like Markdown-ish. Uh, and you can write thesis and papers with with this. Uh, so if you write this times and then you press tab, then it turns into this beautiful times, which is better than the other one. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that was 10 times three plus one. Um, another way to say it is that the, for if you're a bit more math inclined, the rest of the Euclidean, Euclidean division of 31 by three is one because you can fit 10 times three in 31 so that's 30 right and then you end up with one at the end so if i wanted to check for uh for four it's three why is it three because it's seven times four right seven times four that's 28 and and then it's plus three and here you get 31 right so this three is the reason why this is this is three that's the modulus right um okay so i think we've covered everything we've we made it guys so if you stuck all the way to the end congrats um you just listened to that frenchman speak for quite a while uh, and uh, you're gonna see him even more and uh, I thank you very much for uh, sticking around with me and for watching that uh, full 18 minutes video or maybe a bit more and um, yeah if, if you want more videos we have uh, other tutorials on the channel we have uh, other videos it's starting to to look like a channel with a bit more videos so you can um, you can go check them out I'm gonna put uh, the cards and the things everywhere and uh, yeah thank you for thank you for sticking around and if you like what i do you can like you can comment you can uh, subscribe i would uh, very much appreciate so thank you very much and i'll see you soon hopefully bye